Okay, so, so welcome uh, to the ninth annual conference of the um, Younger Comparativist Committee of the American Society of Comparative Law. Uh, as you may know, we, we plan to have uh, our uh, annual conference uh, in Boston this year. Uh, we were supposed to have it at Northeastern University and at the Boston University, back to back with the annual meeting of the American Society of Comparative Law. But uh, the COVID-19 emergency changed our plans. And so we have to rearrange our conference online in one day. So thanks to uh, for being here, uh, even if it's Saturday, and even if it's very early in the morning for someone uh, who is here. Uh, so let me first of all express uh, uh, my deepest gratitude uh, to the American Society of Comparative Law, and in particular to Professor Kay and Professor uh, Langer, um, because they uh, really support uh, the wide CC activities and all our initiatives. Uh, so we are really happy to, to cooperate uh, with the American Society of Comparative Law and to have their full support. Um, I'm also very uh, grateful to the uh, YCC board, to my colleagues, uh, who are working uh, very well in uh, organizing initiatives uh, and also in organizing this uh, annual conference. Uh, the YCC board is made up of uh, five uh, younger scholars, all women. So myself and Vera Corzon, uh, Claudia Opt, uh, Valentina Rita Scotti, and Sara Ross. So I'm really thankful to uh, all of you for uh, your great job. Um, so I also very happy that uh, Professor Langer and Professor Kay are here with us uh, opening our, uh, our conference. And so I give immediately the floor uh, to them. So to Professor Kay and then to Professor Langer. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Um, uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to be here to start uh, this session, this conference today, uh, and to uh, give you my welcome uh, as the outgoing president of the American Society of Comparative Law. Uh, in the job of being president of the American Society of Comparative Law, you can imagine um, you do a lot of welcoming, um, but this and uh, having the election having taken place yesterday, you can uh, take this as my uh, farewell welcome. Um, the YCC uh, has uh, for many years have uh, been one of the most active, um, productive components uh, of the American Society of Comparative Law. And it has done an uh, incredible job in encouraging and developing comparative law scholarship in the United States, um, but also as this I think, meeting will illustrate um, around the world. And it has been my privilege uh, as president and before that as vice president uh, to work with the YCC chair and, uh, and the committee. It's been a pleasure in particular uh, to work with our uh, previous uh, chair of the YCC, Joanna Torquaparidi, as well as uh, the current chair, Antoni. And I know that this cooperation has been valuable to the society, uh, and I hope uh, that it is, has helped the activities of the YCC. And let me mention one thing that Antonia uh, already told you about. Uh, in the past year, uh, something which illustrates the kind of working relationship we have uh, has, was the decision to coordinate uh, the YCC's annual conference with the ASCL annual meeting. And so as Antonia told you, the original plan was to have the YCC conference hold its sessions on Thursday and Saturday, I think, at Northeastern Law School. Uh, Claudia uh, helped uh, and Margaret Wu there were coordinating with us. So it would then kind of bracket uh, the ASCL annual meeting, which takes place on Friday and Saturday 
uh, and would have been at Boston University. So we would have had two sites, but both in Boston, uh, which would allowed um, substantial cross registration, um, which in essence means a larger meeting, a more contacts, more discussion, more relationships established. Um, and I think that would have been, and to some extent still is, uh, especially valuable for younger scholars. Um, well, you know, like everybody else, so we had some surprises waiting for us, uh, and we end up where we are now. Uh, that is where the conferences are indeed taking place uh, in sequence, um, but it also has uh, its advantages in allowing two sets of registrants uh, to profit from the two, uh, but it does not give us, unfortunately, the utility uh, of personal contact with a wide range of scholars uh, that we had hoped for um, in connection with the double Boston Um Let me finally offer, uh, refer to another way in which uh, the closer uh, cooperation and coordination with the society uh, has yielded benefits. Um, and especially uh, those of us who don't quite qualify as younger comparatists have had the chance uh, to consult with, uh, to communicate with, to work with um, the leaders of the Younger Comparatist Committee. And it has given us a chance to evaluate and appreciate their many uh, talents. And as time has gone by, uh, there have been more and more, though I won't name names, uh, an easy transition of people active in the YCC into important leadership roles uh, in the American society. So finally, let me congratulate the committee, congratulate all of the people who are helped organize this and all of the participants uh, in this conference. Uh, the program reveals a rich set of panels, and I look forward to learning uh, from many of them. So thank you all very much. And now I'll ask uh, the current president, uh, Maximo Lanza. Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to uh, the ninth uh, YCC annual conference. Uh, as as now, you know, emeritus president uh, uh, Rick K was just saying, the, the, this this if Rick, this is for you. Your farewell welcoming. This is my first one uh, <laughs> welcoming as president of the Society of, of Comparative Law, and it's a special uh, privilege uh, to do it in this setting because I think that. You are the future of comparative law. Uh, the YCC uh, has already shown that, right? By raising uh, now more than one generation of, of, of comparative law scholars that uh, have gone to, to different institutions, to different positions uh, around the world that have produced very important scholarship also uh, around the world and that, yes, uh, have already made very uh, important contributions uh, to uh, our society. I don't want to repeat, you know, like this, this all the things that, that Antonio Baraglia and, and, and President Kay just said. Uh, I think they are well said and I couldn't say them better. Uh, but um, one thing I do want to emphasize is that uh, the idea of integrating right the two conferences right having the annual meeting and the and the YCC conference back to back uh, is I think a wonderful idea it's an exciting idea it's a pity that this year we couldn't do it in person as we were hoping uh, but um, we are hoping that well we 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 have at least zoom right to to have this version of it and we are hoping that we would be able to do that next year in Wisconsin uh, and, and, and hopefully even three years on the road in Florida International University because the society voted yesterday to have a, its 2023 annual meeting uh, at the uh, Florida International University. So let me also congratulate and, and thank deeply uh, all the members of the YCC committee, Antonio Baraglia, Claudia Haupt, Vera Corzun, 
eh, Valentina Scotti, eh, Sara Ross, that in our website appears like Sara Rossi, Antonia. I think that, you know, like, so, no, 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 I, it's, it's a joke because I think that the, eh, eh, whoever wrote this thought that this was the Italian YCC committee, you know, so Ross was, you know, <laughs> Uh, 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 no, truly, to the to the five of you and all the people that have put work here, uh, it's a wonderful event. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Congratulations to the organizers, uh, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to to this uh, very productive day of of intellectual exchange. So thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Professor K. It has been a really a pleasure to to work with you. And uh, we look forward also to work with uh, Professor Langer uh, in the, for the upcoming events of the YCC and of the American Society of Comparative Law. So before moving uh, with our prize ceremony, I would like to say a few things uh, about uh, the YCC activities and the future initiatives, uh, because uh, the current emergency in particular uh, poses several challenges to the academic world, but especially to younger scholars, because uh, for example, faculty hearing, uh, may slow down and it is more difficult to meet uh, colleagues in person and also to establish a kind of mentorship or to exchange views with senior professor. So the YCC, uh, which is made by younger scholar, is well aware of these difficulties uh, uh, for younger scholar, in, specifically in this time of emergency. And so we are uh, thinking to uh, offer new uh, opportunities uh, uh, to, to the younger scholar using uh, new technologies and uh, these platforms and so on and so forth. So uh, we have uh, recently launched a a book talk series uh, in which uh, uh, we will discuss uh, books written by younger scholars. We, we have uh, uh, last week uh, the first of this book talk uh, in which we presented the Professor Biaggi uh, book uh, on the role of constitutional court and democratic transitions. And uh, on November 13, thanks to Claudia Haupt who organized the event, we will uh, discuss uh, uh, the book, uh, uh, the edited book by Professor Ignacio Cofone uh, from McGill University on uh, uh, privacy and data protection. And so we are uh, planning this uh, book uh, talk series. And so I'm also uh, asking you that if you have uh, uh, ideas or proposal, feel free to reach us and to uh, propose to organize uh, a book talk uh, within this new series. Um, the second thing that uh, we are working on uh, and which is already in place uh, is our mentorship program. Uh, we issued a call uh, for mentorship uh, um, last month. Uh, the idea is that if you have a paper that you are working on, you can send it to, to us and we will match your paper with uh, a professor, an expert in the uh, in the field of in the topic of your paper. So uh, please uh, uh, be aware also of this uh, possibility, which is uh, uh, an occasion, an opportunity to, to have uh, um, comments uh, on your paper by uh, a senior professor. Um, the, the other uh, activities uh, uh, we are working uh, on uh, is, uh, of course, to keep uh, uh, our annual meeting. Uh, and uh, as uh, already Professor Langer said, uh, we are organizing our next uh, annual meeting back to back with the American Society of Comparative Law annual meeting. And it, will, it is planned to be in Wisconsin. And, in 2021, hopefully in person. And so uh, more news will follow when we have a program and more details uh, on it. Uh, so I'm, uh, I just want to say that if you have any ideas or suggestion, please feel free to reach us because we are really eager to uh, work with you and to cooperate uh, with you in building new opportunities and new initiatives. So now 
uh, I am very happy to open the prize ceremony because uh, among our activities, there is also the award of some prize for younger scholar in comparative law. And so uh, for this uh, ceremony, I uh, want to give uh, the floor uh, to the chair of our uh, um, committee, uh, in particular to uh, Professor Alisa King, uh, who is uh, the chair of our scholarship advisory group, uh, which is the group that have uh, uh, evaluated and assessed all the papers that uh, um, were sent to us in response to our call for the Colin B. Picker Prize. So please, Alissa, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Antonia. And um, I would like to thank the whole scholarship advisory committee this year. Um, we are looking for a few new members. So uh, if that's something that interests you, we're particularly interested in subject matter and regional diversity. Um, as, but I would like to thank uh, Claire Ryan, Alan Coe, and um, Sarbani Sen, who helped me uh, read through all of these wonderful entries because we did have quite a few entries this year. And the quality in general was quite good. Um, I'd like to now congratulate um, our top entries. So the, the uh, Colin B. Picker Prize goes to Yiran Zhang for her um, paper on um, so the, the title is a Rethinking the Global Governance of Migrant Domestic Workers, the Heterodox Case of Informal Filipino Workers in China, which is why I hesitated there. It's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, we really appreciated this paper. We enjoyed reading through it, um, in particular because it it's sort of a law in action paper um, in the uh, sort of best realist tradition, it highlights how non-lawyer um, actors think about comparative law and how people actually compare uh, when it comes to their daily lives, their choice of where and how to work. And um, a runner up, uh, also very, very strong paper was Emre Turcotte, Emergency Powers, Constitutional Self-Restraint, well, self in brackets, and judicial politics, the Turkish constitutional court in an authoritarian setting. What we appreciated about this paper um, is the way that it examined judicial politics in Turkey. It was a paper that was accessible to us where uh, none of us really had a particularly strong uh, background in what was going on in Turkey. It, it did a very good job of laying out and explaining the sort of steps and it falls into a sort of trend in scholarship right now that I think is really useful to examine how judiciaries position themselves, not just in liberal democratic regimes where there's been a, a lot of work historically, but also in authoritarian systems and say, you know, no, it's not just like there's no politics in authoritarian system. There, it, there can be judicial politics there and we need to examine that as well. So. Um, two uh, very good papers. They were well written, um, well edited, and we appreciated reading them. Thank you so much, Alisa. I don't know if uh, uh, Iran and Emre are here with us and if they want to say uh, something. Um, so sure, I, I'm, I'm here and I I'm ex exceptionally honored to receive this prize and thank you um, both Professor Kim and Professor uh, Antonia for like reading my paper and also giving feedback on this. It's particularly, it's a particularly isolated time, especially for graduate students that locked up in the bedroom. And so with given that background, it's particularly, um, Awarding to rewarding to receive comments and to have an audience. So I want to thank everybody for making this virtual platform happening this year. Thank you so much. So congratulations, uh, yeah. And uh, Emre. Yeah, I'm also here. You can hear me, right? Great. Yes. 
Well, I can also only, you know, express my sincere thanks for the generosity. And of course, I had no idea that, you know, uh, you were considering me for this award uh, or prize or that, uh, you know, my paper is good enough to be considered for it. So it came as a complete surprise, uh, but still my deepest thanks uh, for recognizing my work. And of course, you know, it gives an amazing feeling to be, you know, uh, to, to get, of getting awarded for the uh, efforts that, that I put in, in the paper. Thank you so much. So thank you, Emre, and congratulations, not only for the prize, but also because yesterday, if I'm uh, correct, you defended uh, your PhD uh, dissertation. So double I congratulations did. to you. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was quite challenging for me, but still, you know, I managed it. Thank you. Great. So uh, and now, I, yes, go I on. Say if I can, sorry. Um, I don't want to volunteer my whole committee, many of whom are not here. But if you did submit to us and you are looking for feedback, um, if you are, for example, thinking of publishing these papers, uh, let me know. Okay. Great, thank you, Alisa. Thank you very much also uh, for uh, your great job uh, in uh, uh, reading all the papers that uh, you and the committee received. Thank you so much. And then we have also our uh, Edel Prize, uh, which is awarded by our affiliate advisory group, chaired by Professor Da Silva. Michael, the floor is yours. Hi, so thank you, uh, Antonia, for uh, the opportunity to revise all these papers, to read all these papers rather, and thank you to the member, the voting members of the affiliate advisory group who made the selections with me. Uh, the Fenner J. Eater Pri LLB slash JD Prize in Comparative Law is for unsurprisingly, LLB slash JD scholarship in comparative law. And this year we had several very interesting papers and it was great fun to read them. Uh, we are also looking for additional members. So this is a call out. It's a lot of fun and it's very fascinating and you get to meet people nice and early who I think we're gonna see around the YCC and the ASCL for quite a while. So um, please do join with us. Uh, we did have several very good papers this year year that you know wouldn't have surprised me if they had have come in for the picker prize uh, but they were from JD LLB students that being said we had among the voting members unanimity on the honorable mention and on the winner this year and they both suggest that this is a very good year for Duke University and in particular a very good year for comparative constitutional law at Duke University as both our honorable mention and our prize winner both came from Duke. Um, I'm not going to give too much detail on the papers because they both will be in section 3B this afternoon on comparative constitutional law. But in addition to giving the names, maybe it'd be nice to just give you a nice little preview and explanation of why we chose them so that uh, many of you can join us this afternoon in 3B. Um, our honorable mention prize goes to Alex Bednar for a paper entitled Democratic Backsliding and Attacks on Independent Judiciary, a Comparative Analysis of Hungary, Poland, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia. And this is a inter very interesting paper of, on an issue of critical importance. It's an analysis of the independence of the judiciaries in the Central European states of Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic. And as Alex interestingly notes, Poland and Hungary are commonly understood to be so-called democratic backsliders, partly due to their lack of an independent judiciary after a series of uh, somewhat recent political events. And yet the otherwise quite similar nations of Slovakia and the Czech Republic don't face this charge. And Alex has a very interesting job of demonstrating that mere structural differences in the constitutions of these four states can't explain this difference in the judicial independence between the first two and latter two countries. And makes a very intriguing claim that's of a particular importance in, given the comparative legal history emphasis of the larger conference, that the long history of judicial review in Czechoslovakia produced a culture of judicial review that survived Czechoslovakia and has avoided democratic backsliding in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. 
So this is a very interesting paper of critical importance and we're happy to provide the honorable mention to it. The winner of the prize, however, was also from Duke and was Haley Lawrence for a paper entitled A Comparative Study of the Political Question Doctrine in the Context of Pol Political System Failures, the United States and the United Kingdom. And this paper is not only a very good analysis of both the basic doctrine of uh, the political questions or non-justiciability -justici doctrine in those two countries and of the recent case law developments in the American British context, but it's also a very nice blend of legal theory and comparative law. So by focusing on recent cases, such as uh, Rucho versus Common Cause, which holds that party, partisan gerrymandering is non-justiciable political issue, and Miller holding that prorogation established a judicial justiciable question, Lawrence shows that there is a split in how the courts are treating this issue. But rather than just uh, showing this interesting legal phenomenon, Lawrence goes on to use John Hart Ellie's classic representation reinforcement theory as a means of reflecting on this doctrine and offers some thoughts on who's taking the most theoretically justifiable approach to these issues. So it's a really nice blend of comparative law and legal theory that the committee was happy to award the prize. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mikael. And uh, so I, if uh, Aile and uh, Alex are here with us, uh, I'm really happy to give uh, them the floor. Aile, are you here? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Um, good morning, everyone from from Durham, from Duke. Uh, thank you so much for for the award. I'm, you know, sincerely appreciative of of your, um, you know, kind words and and evaluation. And thank you for taking the time to read it. Um, I very much look forward to talking about it more later today. And I'll pass it over to Alex, who is a classmate of mine. Yeah, hi, thank you all so much. It's such a great honor to be kind of considered among them, these all, all these really great papers. I really appreciate reading it and receiving the award. Um, thank you so much for everything. I look forward to presenting later this afternoon. Thank you. So congratulations to all and also thanks to our uh, groups uh, that have worked on these two prizes uh, and uh, uh, I renovate uh, the invitation of Mikael and Alisa so if you are willing to serve uh, in one of our uh, advisory group uh, feel free to reach us and so this uh, uh, the YCC experience is really a team experience so uh, we are always happy to have new members uh, and to work uh, uh, with other uh, new members. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, we are now to move on with our conference and so in a half an hour uh, we will have our first uh, set of panels, of concurrent panels. Uh, so the first one uh, will be Public Law in the Digital Age, chaired by Claudia Ott. Uh, the second one, so 1B, is uh, Law and Methodology, chaired by Sarah Ross. And the third one, 1C, is a comparative corporate and commercial law chaired by Vera Corson. So uh, I hope you will enjoy our conference today. And uh, so see you in one of the concurrent panels over, over this day. Thank you so much to everyone and enjoy the conference.